This is Higher Dimension with Apostle Victor Phillips of Faith Factor Ministries. Welcome to our program today. Today we are going to be dealing with a very powerful subject I believe is very necessary. Why is this necessary? Because Jesus himself taught it in the Bible and he encouraged people, he encouraged his followers, you and I, to practice this. I call it the concept of prayer. What is prayer? Prayer is absolutely important. In the book of Luke chapter number 11, we see the account of prayer exemplified by Jesus Christ. If we look at Mark chapter 1 from verse 35, the Bible also talks about Jesus, that when it is early in the morning while people are asleep, Jesus will go to the mountain top to pray. And then when he comes back to civilization, things are happening through him. Is prayer important? What is prayer? Should we even pray? Is it necessary to pray? Yes. We are going to find out these answers as this program continues. But to discuss this with me and to teach on this with me today, I have one of my sons in the Lord, Pastor Daniel Prosper, with me today in the studio to speak with, I mean, to, 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 to discuss and to exchange our knowledge, our revelation and insight on this very subject. So today, help me welcome first time on television with me, one of my sons, Pastor, Victor, uh, Pastor uh, Daniel Prosper. Welcome. God bless you. Thank you for joining me today in this program. Thank and, you, uh, sir. Praise God. Now, I want us, because you are a man. I've known you now. You're my son in the Lord, and I know how God has raised you up even especially in the area of prayer. That is something that God has imparted you dy dynamically with, and you are, I call you a prayer machine. <laughs> and the church actually says that if I'm not around and you are leading the prayer, they think I'm the one doing it. So mm -hmm. I am I'm pleased with that, and I'm grateful to God. But that also means that you have been imparted, you have received revelation, you have received the grace of God in that area. Mm -hmm. Now, so mm -hmm. in from your own understanding and your experience in prayer, what, what do you consider prayer to be? What is prayer to you? Uh, to me, uh, brother and sister in Christ Jesus, to me, prayer is a communication between son and the father. Wow, I like that. That's powerful right there. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Because we know as the children of God, God is not just our God, but He's so our Father. He's our Father. Yes. If you as a son, yes, and you know have relationship between with your father, is that relationship is not good. Mm. You need to have relationship between father and son. So, so for you right now, prayer is the concept of relationship with God. Yes. Wow. Prayer is making f for you to know, to have your relationship between your father and yes. you, how it's going. Mm. Because if you are son and you not communicate with your Don't father. Don't talk to your father. That relationship is something, something is not is wrong. good yeah. in the, between yeah. that relationship. Prayer, it makes you to connect with your father, for you to know what your father needs from you. Did you just hear that? Did you just hear what he said? Prayer connects you with your father. His understanding is this, and I am, I am in complete agreement with you, mm -hmm. that prayer basically means relationship with your father mm -hmm. and god is your father as a child of god god is your father that's why you are called a child of god that means god is your father and so pastor daniel is saying for there to be a genuine relationship it must be on the platform of prayer because prayer connects you with your father. Mm -hmm. Now he's not just talking about God, he's saying your father. That is a powerful insight. Prayer. Now, yeah. now go ahead because you are loaded with this truth. I want you to go ahead. Yes. If it's God is your father, yeah. Okay. We have to know we are relationship between father and son. son. Jesus he died. He paid the full price for us. Yes. And as a child of God, if you are born again, mm -hmm. you have to know your privilege you have as a son. Wow. <laughs> this is beautiful. 
So in our relationship with God, there is a privilege. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You have to know the privilege that you have being a child of God. In other words, of God being your father. That Jesus paid the full price. Yes. So nothing is left to be done mm -hmm, mm -hmm. on the side of God. Yes. So all that is left is now on our side. Yes. Because God has done all there is to do. It's not our responsibility to respond adequately and commensurately to what God represents. And prayer is the key, is the way to get it done. Yes. Prayer, prayer is something what you're talking to God, yes. you're talking to your father. Mm. When you're talking to your father, your father needs what you need. And you're talking to your father. He, he knows what you need. Yes. Yes. But you have to talk to your father mm -hmm. to make a demand for what you need. need that he already knows. Yes. <laughs> you know, Pastor Daniel, there's, it is a powerful insight in the Bible here. Yes. Uh, as, 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 as you look at uh, in the book of Luke, let's look at Luke here. Luke chapter 18, there is something that the Lord himself taught about prayer. Mm -hmm. Now, friend, why is prayer important? Like Pastor Dan already said, prayer is, a, is the prerequisite for a living, lively relationship with the Father. Yes. It's a prerequisite. It's a key. It's, 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 it's the foundation. Without that, there is no prayer. I mean, there is no relationship. But let, let's see different instances in the Bible when Jesus not only taught on prayer, but when he actually demonstrated the act of prayer. Yes. So let, let's look at the book of uh, uh, Luke chapter 18. He taught on prayer here. And this is what I actually call the persistent prevailing Amen. prayer. Amen. Amen. Luke chapter 18. From verse 1, turn with me there quickly. Luke chapter 18 from verse 1. He says, Then he spoke a parable to them that men always ought to pray and not to lose heart. Mm, 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 so mm. right in that verse of scripture, Jesus made prayer mandatory. Yes, yes. So yeah. prayer is mandatory. You have mm. to pray. It is yeah. not optional. Yes, Because pastor. the word ought here means it is compulsory. Mm -hmm, Men mm -hmm. ought always to pray and not to lose heart. In other words, not to be discouraged, mm -hmm, not mm. to give up not to get disgruntled and not to abandon the concept of prayer because you see thank you now because when you lose prayer mm -hmm. you are losing the relationship yes yes my yes. god my god my yes. god that is beautiful right there mm -hmm. because when you lose prayer you lose that relationship mm -hmm. in the sense that there when there is no communication between you there is no that intimacy is not there. Mm -hmm. You don't get to know yourself as much as you ought to. It is like a marriage relationship. Yes, it's like that. You, you have a spouse and you mm -hmm. do not communicate with your spouse. How can that relationship survive? As a matter of fact, many people who divorce, they say it is because of lack of communication, mm -hmm. differences in mindset and opinions. Yes. That's why they get divorced. Yes. So communication is very essential. Mm -hmm. In keeping a relationship going. Uh, let, let me tell you, Pastor. Yes. When you have a more communication, that means your relationship is increasing more. Wow. The lesser communication, the your lesser, relationship, lesser relationship. relationship. So you are Prayer, therefore, is a key to intimacy. Yes. Prayer engenders intimacy. Mm -hmm. Prayer empowers intimacy. Mm -hmm. Prayer is the key to intimacy. Yes. Without intimacy, it is over. Mm -hmm. And prayer is the key to that intimacy. Mm -hmm. Wow. This yeah. is beautiful. Yes, because for like, the example you give, the relationship between a husband and a wife, oh, yes. if not have a uh, communication so, relationship, if not work it's that no, way. Yeah. The same thing with prayer. The more prayer you pray, you will know your father. Mm. And your father will know more what you need. And how your father will know that? He will know that just only by prayer. Mm. 
when you go to him in the prayer, you present yourself and you know and you need what you need. You present your father, your father will know what you need. Without not to you to go to your father to ask or to say what you need, your father he will not know what you need. And it says that there will never be an answer to it because he commanded yes. us, he said, ask. Yes. you shall receive. Mm -hmm. In Matthew chapter 7, it said, ask, you shall receive. Seek, you shall find, and knock, it shall be opened unto you. Mm -hmm. So prayer is asking. But watch it now. You said something very powerful here. You said prayer makes you to know your father. Yes, yes. So prayer, therefore, is not just for receiving healing, receiving a new car, receiving a new pair of shoes, receiving a new home. Though it could produce those things, the primary objective of prayer is not just for receiving things. It is to know because it is for relationship. And let me tell you, my papa, you know, prayer is not just you to talk to your father. Mm -hmm. Prayer is your father talking to you and you talking to him. When you are in the prayer, you are in the presence of God. Mm. You talking to the father and the father talking to you. That is the prayer. That's why increase the relationship because both of you you communicate, you communicate you are talking. into prayer. Wow. You can communicate without no prayer. Hmm. Friend, are you hearing this? This is so lively. This is so powerful. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. you know, Pastor Daniel, we are going to have to deal with this, what I'm about to say now, uh, at the other side of this program. Mm -hmm. We're going to take a little break and then we're going to come back and, and, and continue speaking on this. So this is very important. But before we go on this break, I want to say this. Because people have a misconception about prayer. They have a misconception about prayer. They think prayer is only for receiving mm -hmm. things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so they do not pray because they think they are satisfied where they are. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So from what we are understanding tonight, Prayer is not just for receiving things, mm -hmm. and it's actually to be in a living relationship, a yes. vibrant relationship yes, with, with your father. father. So on that note, we mm. are going to hold our thoughts, yes. and we're going to get right back and continue from there. Mm -hmm. Watch this now. Faith is that inner drive, that motivation. That resilience that helps you to see the big picture in spite of the present opposition. So, see the big picture in spite of... Welcome back. Now, if you're just tuning into this program, call your friends, call your neighbors, tell them to tune into this channel because something good is happening. This is actually the Higher Dimension Show with uh, Apostle Victor Phillips of Fit Factor Ministries. Our church is actually located in Niagara Falls. We have a living, thriving, cutting edge church in the city of Niagara Falls. Our address is on the screen. We're inviting you to come visit with us one of these uh, uh, weekends and you are going to be greatly impacted by the presence of God. People are giving testimonies, Pastor Danny, every time of what is going on. Healing, supernatural healing, coming breakthroughs in the lives of people. That is the hand of God. Friends, I have with me my son in the Lord, one of my sons in the Lord, uh, Pastor Daniel Prosper. And we are speaking on the subject of prayer, the concept of prayer. And you began to say to me that prayer is communication with God. Yes. Prayer is not just about asking things from God, mm -hmm. but rather it is about knowing your Father. Yes. That without prayer, there is really no relationship. Mm -hmm. Then the implication there for Pastor Daniel is that for there to be any authentic relationship, yes. there must be communication. Yes. Because yes. prayer is communication. Yes. Without no communication, there is no relationship. Wow. We say it before. The husband and the wife, they can live together in the same house if there's no communication. No, no communication. Have to be a communication. And that communication is not just for one minute or two minutes. The more time you have a conversation, the more time your relationship increases, and the more time you will know yourself. The husband will know his wife, and the wife will know her husband. Her husband. Now, now, look at what we were looking at in the scriptures before. Yes. In Luke chapter 18, mm -hmm. from verse 1. 
Then he spoke a parable to them that men ought always to pray and not faint or not lose heart, not give up, not be discouraged. Mm -hmm. The reason, verse 2, saying there was in the city, mm -hmm. in the certain city, mm -hmm. a judge who did not fear God nor mm -hmm. regard man. Mm -hmm. Now there was also a widow in that city. And she came to him, that is coming to the judge, saying, get me justice from my adversary. Mm -hmm. It's amazing because Jesus used concepts, ideas, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. illustrations yes. to demonstrate kingdom realities, mm -hmm. to explain the kingdom of God. Yes. Yeah, he, brought, he brought the concept of a wicked judge mm -hmm. and a woman in need. Yes. Not just a woman, but a widow. Yes, that's what was a widow. But very yeah. important. Mm -hmm. Because, you see, at this time, the crowd that he actually was speaking to were the Jewish people, yes. Israelites. Yes, yes. In that culture at that time, mm -hmm. widows basically were individuals who were marginalized. Mm -hmm. Because the concept of that time is the male figure, the husband of the home, yes. is their provider. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then he provides for his family, his wife and his children. And if for any reason the man dies, the family will suffer. Mm -hmm. Now, this woman was basically at the bottom of the whole thing. Mm -hmm. There's no account of her children here. So she was at the bottom of the whole thing. Mm -hmm. The husband is dead. The judge is up there. And the judge is a wicked judge. Mm -hmm. But there is this woman who has a need. Yes. Yeah. Then she went to this judge. And in verse 4, it says, And the judge would not for a while. But afterward, he said within himself, Though I do not fear God nor have regard for human beings, mm -hmm. yet because this widow troubles me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming mm -hmm, mm -hmm, she mm -hmm. weary me yes now the implication here is this go ahead tell yes us. yes i want her to say something to you you see that judge he says something for that woman because that woman he keep going back to him, to him yes if that woman he's not going every time back to him that judge is not possible to say that hmm. he said that because he see the the way that woman he keep going to ask him his justice that is insisting yes persistence mm -hmm. <laughs> this is beautiful friends yes this is beautiful now this is a wicked judge who came to reason with himself mm -hmm. he wasn't reasoning good here because he was a good man mm -hmm. but it was by reason of that woman constantly yes. praying yes communicating reaching out insisting persisting and saying she will not give up until she receives her answer yes her justice which she was demanding mm -hmm. and the judge was in the position to grant her a justice yeah. from her adversary mm -hmm. the adversary here speaks about the wickedness of the devil speaks about the devil himself yes and yeah. the judge here is a person who is in a position to grant her a desire mm -hmm. to set her free but for reasons best known to the judge he didn't want to answer the woman's prayer but he, however, he realized that if he didn't answer the prayer, he will be in trouble. Yes. Because yes. the woman isn't going to give up on him mm -hmm. until he grants her a desire. This teaches on persistence. Yes. Continually praying. What is continually praying to you? Continual prayer to me is for you. First of all, for you to know what you need in your prayer mm. if you know what you need in your prayer it will make you to be consistent in Cons your yeah, consistent yeah i like that if you know what you need it will make you to be consistent wow this is so beautiful so, yes. see, see, so the point you are raising now is that wherever there is no prayer or prayerlessness mm -hmm. There is a lack of vision. Yes, and a lack of need. 
a lack of need, a lack of not not necessarily of need of not knowing the yes, need because yes. people that always right have need. Word. That's the right yes. word. Yes. Lack of not knowing that, which is basically lack of vision. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Wow. Yes. Wow. Beautiful. 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 Yes. Because if you know what you need, you yeah. will pursue it until you receive and, it. Until you receive it. But if you don't know what you need, you can't pursue it. Hmm. You pursue only what you know and what you need. This is so amazing. Yes. This is amazing. So, friend, I want to ask you today, what do you need? You have needs. You say, I don't know what you need. I ask you a question. Do you know any family member who is not saved, who is not born again? Do you know anybody around you who is sick? That is a need right there. That is a need right there. Where you are right now in life, talking about status in life, do you think that is the best that God has for you? Because I believe that God has a great destiny for you. Like we have said many times, I used to say at the church, that greatness is free. Yes, yes. But it is not cheap. Greatness is free. But it is not cheap. So God has a great destiny for you, a beautiful one for you, an awesome one for you. But that alone does not bring it to pass. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So you have to pray yes. it into manifestation. Mm -hmm. Then you have to persist and also be consistent mm -hmm. in your prayer for there to be an actualization. Yes, yeah. Because, like I said earlier, Jesus yes. Christ, yeah, Jesus Christ, he paid the price. the price for us for everything. Mm. But without no you to ask, without no you, Wait, without, you, you without you not asking, without you not asking, yes, you can receive your full benefits as a child of God. Because you are breaking up a verse of scripture now, which is found in the book of Matthew, but that statement you are making. Mm -hmm. Let's turn to the book of Matthew, please. Yes. Matthew chapter 7, because it's breaking up the powerful, powerful statement right there. And in Matthew chapter 7 and verse number 7, it says here, Ask, mm -hmm. and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Mm -hmm. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. Mm -hmm. For whoever or everyone who asks receives. Mm -hmm. I like that. Yes, yes. Everyone who asks. So right here, you are commanded to ask. Yes, and asking yes. is praying. Mm -hmm. So it is not an option. You are commanded. It said ask. Yes. So it's a command. Mm -hmm. Then it says seek. Mm -hmm. Then it said knock. Mm -hmm. Because everyone who asks receives. Yes. So yes. if you are not receiving, Maybe you are not asking. Mm -hmm, okay, mm -hmm. you may say you have been asking. Maybe you will not be asking properly. Mm -hmm. If you ask properly, you will receive correspondingly. Yes. It's our, it's our Father. And uh, let me tell you, many people, as they're praying, they, their mind or their concepts, God is far away. Mm. Or our Father is far away. The thing is far. That's why sometimes the many people they don't receive their answer because they think God is far. Yes. But God is just close to you. Mm. Everyone, when you pray, you have to have that conscious concept. Yeah. Concept. Yeah. God is with you. Yes. Is beside with you. Mm. He's waiting for you to say something what you want Him mm. to do for mm. you. So when they think that God is far away, like mm -hmm. 20 billion miles away, mm -hmm. so they think it's so distant, Yes, and there's no use doing that because it will never get to him mm -hmm. or you will never receive from him. Friend, if you are a believer in Christ Jesus, God is not far away from you. Yes, God is in you through the person of the Holy Spirit. That is the very reason Jesus said, I'm going back to heaven. Go read the book of John, chapter 16. He said, I'm going back to heaven. In fact, he started teaching on that from chapter 14, part of 15, and then 16, he really climaxes it. He said, he said, it's going back to heaven so that you may receive the promise of the Father. 
the promise of the Father is for the Holy Spirit to come and dwell in us. That I will not leave you, I will not forsake you. Mm -hmm. I won't leave you comfortless. I won't leave you as orphans. But I'm going to send to you another comforter. Mm -hmm. Not a man, not a human being, but the Spirit of God that is called the Holy Spirit. I repeat myself, that I will send you another comforter. He wasn't talking about a person, mm -hmm. a human mm -hmm. being, flesh and blood. He was talking about the Holy Spirit. I will send you another comforter who will be with you. So, friend, God is in you through the person of the, the personality of the Holy Spirit. So don't think that God is billions of miles far away from you. It's right there with you at this moment. So when you understand this and begin to pray accordingly, you can be you know, assured that God will hear you and God will answer you and your answers will manifest speedily. And when you pray as a child of God, you have to know you're not just speaking to God, but have that conscience, concept, God is your father. Mm. You're talking to your father. And if you're talking to your father, you don't need to afraid. You your father that loves you. Yes. You don't need to be afraid. I wish we had more time, Pastor Danny, right now. Praise God. Uh, Praise time is, time, I mean, this is beautiful. This is something that we need to actually really continue. Praise but God. In the next, uh, in the next 30 seconds, if it's possible, to use 30 seconds here, how did you get to this point of prayer becoming something that is easy for you to do? In this point, the prayer becoming easy for me is I love prayer and I will to have a relationship between Father. That's why he pushed me to pray more because I want that relationship. You want the relationship. So relationship with God, a desire, hunger for God. Yes. Is what turned you to a life of prayer. Mm -hmm. That is where your empowerment came from. Yes. And that is possible for you tonight. Yes. And today. It's true. That it's possible if for you, everyone. If you turn, if you desire God, if you desire a relationship, that becomes a motivation. Mm -hmm. That basically means even in life, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. anything you desire could motivate you to achieve it. Mm -hmm, that vision mm -hmm. is absolutely important. Yes. Oh, yeah. friends, I wish we had more time. We love you so much. Thank you for watching our show today. We release the grace to pray effectively into your lives. Yes. We'll see you next time. Remember that Jesus Christ is Lord. Bye-bye. Faith is that inner drive. That motivation, that resilience that helps you to see the big picture in spite of the present opposition. So, see the big picture.